desperate search for a mother and her young daughter continues, but the case keeps getting more and more complicated. This morning, the girl's estranged father was hospitalized after a standoff with police. Local 10 News reporter Laren Livingston live outside Kendall Regional Hospital now where he is recovering this morning. Laren. That's right, and as you know that the search for this mother and her daughter has been ongoing for days now and then almost out of left field, this development that sent this father of this little girl to here, Kendall Regional Hospital, rushed here after an encounter with police, and he's been here since Friday afternoon for our understanding, or at least Thursday afternoon from our understanding, after reportedly trying to take his own life. Police tell Local 10 News they got word Thursday that Gustavo Castano may have been having suicidal thoughts. Officers would later find him outside a Hialeah Home Depot in a rented truck with a box cutter in his hand. To me, it seems like someone can live with their conscience. He threatened to harm himself to the officers as they were approaching by placing the box cutter uh, in the area of his neck. Castano was rushed to the hospital with self-inflicted wounds to his neck. Detectives searched the area where he was found, including a nearby lake, but nothing turned up. Police have not named Castano as a suspect or person of interest, but his home has been searched along with a warehouse he's connected to. My family is worried about this situation. This is really weird that something is missing. Family members still hopeful, prayerful, that they'll find Liliana Moreno and her eight-year-old daughter Daniela alive and well. It's heartbreaking knowing that Danielita is somewhere out there and we can't get to them along with her mom. I miss them. This is something that nobody wants to go through. And it's important to note that Castano is not under arrest, hasn't been charged with anything, and at last check he was in stable condition here at Kendall Regional. And of course, if you know anything about where uh, Liliana Moreno or eight-year-old Daniela may be, you're encouraged to contact Miami-Dade Police as soon as possible. We'll keep you posted as this situation moves forward, especially if we find these two individuals. For now, reporting live there in Livingston, Local 10 News. New overnight, an investigation underway after a car ended up in a canal in Pembroke Pines. It happened near North Perry Airport at the intersection of North University Drive and Pines Boulevard. The car crashed through a chain link fence behind a strip mall before going underwater. Crews were at the scene pulling the car out of that canal. Still unclear if anyone was hurt there. The wife of Hall of Fame linebacker Lawrence Taylor is denying the accusations after being arrested on domestic violence charges. She's accused of throwing an object at the football legend, hitting him in the back of the head. Police say that the former football player was left with a three-inch gash on his head. Lynette Taylor also faces charges of resisting arrest after officers say she was combative when they arrived. Lynette Taylor denied those charges in court yesterday. Yeah, oh no. That's a lie. My husband is... 300-pound linebacker. I didn't hit him in the head. Yes, I'm Lawrence Taylor's wife. He lied. Lawrence Taylor spent his entire 13-year career with the New York Giants, winning two Super Bowl titles. Miramar police looking for the driver of a white cargo van who they say hit and killed a person. Nearby surveillance video shows this person trying to cross the road as cars race by. That's when a white cargo van slams into him on State Road 7 near Southwest 25th Street. Investigators say the victim here landed nearly 100 feet from the point of impact. Police still not sure the victim's name because he didn't have any identification on him at the time. Police say this still photo right here from the video shows that the white van has some damage to the front left fender. So anyone with any information asked to call Broward County Crime Stoppers at 954-493-TIPS. A fiery train derailment leaving quite a mess and forcing people to evacuate. Coming up, the latest on the damage and environmental impact left behind. Also, a bear climbing up to a tree near a home and refusing to come down for hours. How the standoff finally came to an end. And for us in South Florida, it is warm. Take a look at that. The low right now, or the temperature, I should say, only dropping to 80 degrees dark and early at this hour. Most likely not dropping too much because of the cloud cover. I'll be tracking the tropics as we watch uh, that system over the Caribbean when we come back. Out the door, Local 10 News live streaming right now on the Local 10 app and local10.com. Welcome back. Cleanup is underway after a train towing cars full of oil 
derailed in Oregon, sparking a large fire as well. It happened yesterday just east of Portland. And 11 cars derailed on a track parallel to the Columbia River, sending a plume of black smoke into the sky. The fire forced people in that area to evacuate. Steps have been taken to contain possible contamination and minimize damage to wildlands and water supplies. The area has been evacuated in a quarter mile radius and residents beyond that have been put on notice for possible evacuation if needed. Now at this point it is unclear if oil seeped into the river and it's also unclear what caused the derailment. No injuries were reported. Fort Hood, Texas, now mourning the deaths of nine soldiers who were attempting to cross a flooded creek when the military vehicle they were riding and overturned. Other soldiers in a vehicle behind them were able to rescue three of their comrades who were hospitalized and have since been released. The accident comes as parts of Texas are completely underwater. With the continuing downpour of rain, we will face sustained challenges uh, for a few more days. Massive flooding from the record rainfall has led the Texas governor to declare a state of disaster in dozens of counties as parts of the state remains under a flood warning. The relentless rain could finally break this weekend. New this morning, officials working to remove a bear that climbed up a tree in Jacksonville in a neighborhood there. Here's a look at that bear hanging out. He's in that tree behind a home. And last night, wildlife officials actually shot the animal several times with tranquilizer darts. Officials say the bear eventually did fall asleep, but he's still up the tree and they're trying to get him down. <laughs> okay, so our local 10 news team going over the edge to help raise money for the Miami Children's Initiative. Our very own Constance Jones and Jennifer Crayo. Wow, look at them getting ready. Participated in this event. This was yesterday. Each year, dozens of people strap on repelling gear and take the plunge for Over the Edge Miami, it's called. This event helps raise money for children and families who are living in Miami in poverty. Wow, look at you. Jennifer, <laughs> look, Ma, no hands. You are such a, you're getting a little cocky up there, girl. They made me do that. Yeah? <laughs> for the picture, no, it was pretty cool. Actually, uh, we actually got hit by a strong wind gust, uh, thunderstorm rolling into downtown. Yeah, it got um, pretty interesting to say the least. However, made for a good experience, a good story, all worth it. And of course, again, Miami Children's Initiative, all for the kids of Liberty City. So I, I, uh, all of this goes a long way. Uh, but this morning, we are waking up to mainly dry conditions, a few showers out there and by the way it is very warm temperatures struggling to lower down into those upper 70s in West Miami Dade they have but in Broward look at that Pompano Beach at 81 degrees 80 in Fort Lauderdale then down into the Keys 79 right now in Marathon but it is 83 in Key West so very warm and humid uh, ready for the start of this Saturday calm winds for Fort Lauderdale elsewhere it's a light wind that's out of the south southeast right now and we do have a lot of cloud cover out there, but as far as the showers, there were um, more showers impacting the Keys now. Those have dissipated. Again, we can still have showers along the coast this morning at least until 9, 10 a.m. and then thunderstorms will start to develop out in the inland areas and pull on west, and that could happen as early as 11 a.m. Also, if we don't, if some of you don't get the storms, you'll get sun and clouds for today. Very hot, and of course, we'll be tracking this area as it makes its way through the Yucatan Peninsula into tomorrow. Now, where exactly is it right now? This disturbance is actually right off the coast, uh, the east coast of Honduras, and it is very disorganized. But that wave is going to track again towards the Yucatan by tomorrow. It will develop into at least a depression. Most likely, we'll be talking about a tropical storm, and if that's the case, it'll be tropical storm Colin. Either way, it is headed into the peninsula, into the bend right there, northwest Florida. So that's where we're expecting to see the highest amount of rainfalls over three inches of rain from Tampa, Gainesville, all the way to Jacksonville. This is through Tuesday night, and then down into South Florida here. Rain chances or rain amounts may not be as high, but locally could be higher than what you see right there because it all depends on those bands and uh, some of those. Those bands may be drier than others. Also, there's, of course, the risk of severe storms, but that will be starting Monday and then leading into Tuesday. So if you're heading out to the beach today, you can still enjoy it. The earlier, the better. Use that sunscreen. Highs today, 90 degrees, and we're bringing up those rain chances, of course. So again, Monday, Tuesday looks like it'll be the wettest of the days. Also becoming windy as well. Erica. 
And of her great grandmother attending her granddaughter's graduation, except she wasn't watching from the audience. Coming up, more on this grandma in her cap and gown. Also a live look from our Miami Tower Cam of the Magic City, the twinkling lights, dark and early as we like to say on the weekend mornings. It's 521 and 80 degrees. First, we're going to have a look at that winning lottery numbers. Hope you have a winner. Good luck. Always watching, always tracking. Meteorologist Jennifer Correa on the one and only Local 10 News, your weather authority. Welcome back. If you're looking for something to do today with the fam, we have a few events to tell you about this morning. The Summer Games exhibit is opening at the Miami Children's Museum. Kids can enjoy obstacle courses, dance parties, and more. The museum is open from 10 in the morning until 6 o'clock today. Admission is $20. And if you're in the Lauder Hill area, take the whole family to a safety day at John E. Mullen Aquatic Center. There's going to be water safety lessons, CPR and scuba demonstrations, free swimming, games, raffles, all, all kinds of stuff. It's going to be fun. The event starts at noon and goes until 5 p.m. And it's free for the entire family. Also, train day is happening at Gold Coast Railroad Museum in Miami today. There's going to be trains on display, bounce houses, and several other activities for both kids and adults. The event is from 11 in the morning until 4 o'clock this afternoon. Lehigh High School welcomes our first 87-year-old graduate. Rowena Littlefield Tesla was born. Well, she has waited 70 years to graduate from high school and now a great-grandmother in Utah finally getting her turn. It was a moment the 87-year-old th once thought would just never happen. This is so incredible. Raleen Taysom, she dropped out of high school back in 1944 when her father passed away, leaving her to care for her and seven siblings. She says she had to work hard to help support the family, so she never got the chance to go back to school. But this year, Raleen's family spoke to the school district superintendent, and they asked if she could graduate with her great-granddaughter. I thought we were just kidding. They kept looking at me when they passed, like, what are you doing here? <laughs> made me feel good. I was doing something special and honorable. I feel like I really did what I wanted. Now that she's graduated, Raleen says she's not ruling out any future education or career options, but for now, she's sticking with her day job as a great grandma. We are still following breaking news overnight after it was announced that boxing legend Muhammad Ali passed away. Coming up, we have a live report from the historic 5th Street Gym where Ali trained right here in South Florida. Also next, a trooper saying he was forced to fire after a traffic stop turned violent. The encounter caught on camera. And good morning, South Florida. Waking up to very warm and muggy conditions. By the way, if you want to take those boats on the water today for the Keys, so far no advisories. Bays at a moderate chop today sees anywhere between 1 to 2 feet inside the reef. 2 to 4 beyond that winds out of the east and southeast. More on your forecast when we return. Take Local 10 online. Local 10 News starts right now. 5.30, dark and early and 80 degrees. Already 80 degrees. It's a warm and muggy morning here in South Florida. And of course, everybody wants to know what the weekend's going to be like. And so we take it over to Jennifer Correa. Meteorologist Jennifer Gray. Hi. Good morning, Jen. <laughs> good morning, Todd, and good morning, Erica. Good morning, South Florida. Yes, it is warm and muggy out there. Temperatures struggling to drop down. Now, as far as rainfall, we've had a few showers here and there. Uh, most of the showers impacting the Keys, but as you can see, most of this has dissipated. So uh, we can expect a few more coastal showers along uh, the, the east coast of Broward and Miami-Dade throughout the rest of the morning. Otherwise, it is going to def definitely be a warm start for us. Now, winds are calm in Fort Lauderdale. Elsewhere, it's a 5 to 10 mile per hour wind speed and temperatures dropping into the low 80s this morning morning. We could still drop to 79 degrees as our morning low. Then we'll jump back up really fast, hitting those uh, upper 80s, low 90s later on this afternoon. Let's talk about the tropics and we are watching that area 
of disturbed weather. Very disorganized showers and thunderstorms trying to cluster together. Now the actual area is right about here. So off of the northeast coast of Honduras, it will continue to track towards the Yucatan Peninsula. And once it gets about there and heads into the warmer waters of the southern Gulf of Mexico, that's when the potential for formation really goes up to 70%. This is definitely something we have to track. I'll have more on this coming up. Erica. Breaking overnight, legendary boxer Muhammad Ali has died at the age of 74. The former heavyweight champion of the world had been hospitalized for a respiratory illness. The civil rights activist received the Presidential Medal of Freedom from President George W. Bush back in 2005, and he was known for his tireless efforts to promote his law and help those in need, as well as participating in some of boxing's most legendary fights. Ali was arguably one of the most recognized and respected sports figures our world had ever seen. He certainly was, and his death announcement late last night by his family comes after a very long battle with Parkinson's disease. He called himself the greatest and told us how pretty he was. And for more than 20 years, he backed up his words with his fists. Beginning with a gold medal at the 1960 Summer Olympics, Cassius Clay took the boxing world by storm. In one of his first big pro fights, he brashly predicted an upset over heavyweight champion Sonny Liston. And if you like to lose your money, be a fool and bet on Sonny. Ali won that fight and the title in February of 1964. Then he announced his conversion to Islam and his new name, Muhammad Ali. A storm of criticism did not sway him. Whatever the punishment, whatever the persecution is for standing up for my religious beliefs, even if it means facing machine gun fire that day, I will face it before denouncing Elijah Muhammad and the religion of Islam. The flamboyant Ali found a straight man worthy of his persona, sportscaster Howard Cosell. We're just trying to make it look like something new for I'm always confident I'm with all of them. You're being extremely truculent. Whatever succulent mean, if that's good, I'm there. But the relationship was more than just an act. When Ali was stripped of his boxing title after refusing induction in the armed forces, citing religious reasons, Cosell spoke out in his defense. Finally, a court restored his boxing license, allowing Ali to return to the ring after a three-year absence. It was wrong what they did. You know, and they later admitted they did it, but then all the harm was done. We didn't see the best of this kid. Because this kid was so good at that time electrifying. Ali's comeback included some of his best remembered bouts. In 1974, he defeated George Foreman in Zaire, regaining the heavyweight title. Three times in four years, he fought Joe Frazier, culminating in 1975's Thrilla in Manila. In 1978, he won a rematch against Leon Spinks, becoming the first boxer ever to earn the heavyweight championship three times. His retirement was marked by the advance of Parkinson's disease. America's most beloved athlete became a champion for victims of the disease and an advocate for Parkinson's research. His devoted wife, Lonnie, became his voice when he could no longer speak for himself. But no matter how disabling the disease became, Muhammad Ali never lost his quick mind or the twinkle in his eyes. To many, he remains in his own words. Still the greatest of all time. Continuing our coverage of the death of Muhammad Ali, Local 10 News reporter Ben Kennedy is live outside the historic gym in Miami Beach where Ali trained here in South Florida. Good morning, Ben. Good morning, Todd. As you were talking about, Muhammad Ali had such a big impact right here in South Florida. He fought and trained at the Fifth Street Gym. In fact, you can see right here behind me, there is a picture of him on the front glass of the gym. It is here that boxers mourn the loss of a legend. Known around the world as the greatest, Muhammad Ali, a legendary boxer, passed away overnight after being hospitalized with serious respiratory problems. And it's tragic. I mean, he's a legend. He is boxing. Muhammad Ali is the one that really brought the good persona of boxing and as a representative of the game. Two-time heavyweight champion of the world. We caught up with heavyweight champ Shannon Briggs hours before the news broke of Ali's death. I was 20 years old when I met Muhammad Ali at Madison Square Garden and he mumbled in my ear, he said, if I fought you, I'd call you pretty lady. At the time, I had blonde dreadlocks, so um, now I'm a bald old man. Ali has ties to South Florida fighting and training at the Fifth Street Gym on Miami Beach. Here he is a few years back before the opening game at Marlins Park. 
it seems everyone he met has a story, like this man who was his driver in New York City. We were going through the Bronx, and he rolled down the window and said, I beat Joe Frazier right there in Yankee Stadium. He stood for something. He had a strong, you know, backbone of cause, and I think everyone will remember him. In 2013, the 5th Street Gym moved from Washington and 5th to right here behind me off of Alton. It is there. We actually learned this morning from their website that there is a brand new class named after Muhammad Ali. So his legacy does live on right here on the beach. Reporting live in Miami Beach this morning, Ben Kennedy, Local 10 News. Caught on camera, a dramatic confrontation between an FHP trooper and a driver in Miami Gardens. Watch as the trooper jumps on the hood of a car before opening fire and killing the driver as he speeds away. 24-year-old Dal Pierre Lewis was the man behind the wheel there. Officials say he was driving without a license. A small group of family and friends, they gathered to pay their respects to Lewis. Screams from his mother could be heard throughout the funeral home. The family's attorney now speaking out about this. You know, this was a simple traffic stop. You know, he didn't, you know, come from robbing a bank or, uh, or fleeing from a murder scene. The charge is fleeing and eluding an officer. It's not a death sentence. Sky 10 was over that scene. It happened along Northwest 37th Avenue near the Palmetto Expressway. Officials say the trooper had no choice but to fire at Luis. If he felt that his life was threatened and the vehicle's gonna run you over, you know, that's an assault with a deadly weapon. The family's attorney says he plans to go over FHP's policies to see if there's grounds for a lawsuit here. Police are trying to identify the body of a man found floating near several alligators earlier this week. His body was found in Southwest Ranches uh, in the canal there on Monday. Police believe that he was in his 50s or 60s and had no teeth other than two rear molars. The body was found surrounded by gators in that canal, but police are treating the death as a homicide and don't believe he was killed by the gators. President Obama now in Palm City after making a short stop here in Miami. The president arrived in South Florida to attend a couple of fundraisers for Democratic candidates, including Representative Patrick Murphy, who's running for Marco Rubio's soon to be vacant Senate seat. Here's video of the president leaving one of those fundraisers in Miami Beach. Air Force One and the president took off from MIA last night, heading to Palm City without any events on his public schedule. Word is he's set to enjoy a weekend of golf. Oh, look at my African-American over here. Look at him. Now to vote 2016. Donald Trump held a rally in California and spoke about his support among African-Americans by pointing out a black man in the crowd and calling him my African-American. The presumptive Republican nominee made that comment while speaking about a previous rally in Arizona where a black supporter was arrested after punching a protester. The man Trump pointed out is Gregory Cheadle, a Republican running for a congressional seat in the area. Cheadle says he did not take offense and was happy to have been noticed. Serendipity. I mean, well, I think I was the only black guy in the audience anyway. So. <laughs> uh, I think that had a lot to do with it. Had he said my African-American friend or my African-American supporter or something like that, it would have been different. At the rally, Trump spoke about the tremendous support he says he has among black voters, but in an ABC News poll conducted in April, Trump had an 84 percent disapproval rating among African-Americans. All right, hurricane season, it's upon us, and guess what? We're already tracking a disturbance in the tropics. Oh, boy. Coming up, Chief Meteorologist uh, Betty Davis tells us about new tools and technologies that are being used this season. And we'll have more on the passing of the greatest of all time, Muhammad Ali, as the world remembers the three-time heavyweight champion. Remember, Local 10 News is always on. Local10.com, your smartphone and your tablet. Take us with you. A dope ride made out of cannabis. That's right, cannabis. Like Ten times more dent resistant. A South Florida man's weeding out chemicals and rolling with green. Local 10 takes you for a ride you can't pass up. Tomorrow after Game 2 of the NBA Finals. Welcome back to 2016 hurricane season. It just started mm -hmm. and we're already seeing activity in the tropics. We are, so we want to make sure you're ready. So Weather Authority Chief Certified Meteorologist Betty Davis, she went to the National Hurricane Center to learn more about the new storm surge MAPS forecasters will be using. 
Forecasters and federal officials unite at the National Hurricane Center to send a clear message about the 2016 Atlantic Basin hurricane season. Get ready now. Plan for hurricane season. South Florida has not had a major strike since Wilma in 2005. National Hurricane Center Director Dr. Rick Knapp recognizes that many people have become complacent. I ask folks to think about what would it be like if that hurricane you didn't think was going to come this year is later this year on your doorstep. You're going to all of a sudden desperately wish you had done some things in advance because getting ready for the next hurricane is really difficult to do at the very last minute. There are many things to consider, including whether you live in an evacuation zone. As Hurricane Andrew showed, the wind can be extremely damaging and deadly, but nine out of 10 fatalities in U.S. landfalling tropical cyclones have been due to water, whether it's storm surge in the coastal areas, inland flooding, people being lost at the beach and on boats, so let's respect the water. New this season, a storm surge potential flooding map. It's meant to give you an idea of how far inland storm surge could push and how high above ground the water could get. That water that comes up faster than any high tide you ever saw with wave action that is a battering ram that is not just merely getting wet but becomes life threatening. The only response is to evacuate. The message is clear. Having a plan is key. Betty Davis, Local 10 News. And you can get prepared for hurricane season online by heading over to local10.com. There you can watch our hurricane house call special and find out what you need to do to get your home and family ready for a storm. Jennifer, what are we like four days into a hurricane <laughs> season and we've already got some action in the You're tropics. already busy back there in the weather office, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's been an interesting year, Erica and Todd, because our first name storm was Alex, which was back in January, then uh, closer to J uh, June 1st, right before June 1st, tropical storm Bonnie happened and now we're tracking another area that could perhaps be become a tropical storm Colin by early next week. So yes, it's been pretty busy so far to say the least and even busy here in South Florida. We've been having some heavy downpours uh, a few afternoons throughout the week and right now it is quiet out there waking up though to warm temperatures out there. Temperatures struggling to fall into the upper 70s for Broward. As you can see, it's in the low 80s even by Miami holding on to that 80 degree mark uh, as you pull on westward Miami Dade County. You are dropping into the upper 70s, but you know what? It doesn't really make a difference. It is so muggy out there. So once you step out the door this morning, that humidity is really going to hit you right now. It's a light wind or calm and uh, wind direction will remain out of the east and southeast for today. A few showers are redeveloping offshore, still a few miles east of Broward County and looks like they're tracking a little more towards the northern direction may be an impact for parts of Broward County as we head into the morning hours. Otherwise, do expect thunderstorms to develop later on in the late morning around 11 a.m. and then through the afternoon hours as well. And those storms expected to pull west. Anyways, here's a look at the Western Caribbean. Here's this area of disturbed weather showers and thunderstorms trying to cluster together. There is an indication right now of some convective activity going on on this infrared satellite. That area is expected to push towards the northwest into the Yucatan Peninsula by tomorrow. As it does so, it will continue to track into the southern Gulf of Mexico. That's when it's expected to intensify. A cold front to the north of us is going to pull that low, pick it up, and whether it does become a tropical storm or not, we are expected to see some significant amount of rainfall across the state of Florida, especially for north and central Florida. Check it out. Over three inches of rainfall from Tampa to Jacksonville locally higher amounts than that. Not too impressive for Miami, but we could still be dealing with some heavy rain bands. And by the way, bands have the potential producing severe thunderstorms, so the threat of isolated tornadoes cannot be ruled out. Timing of this will be Monday, Tuesday, maybe even into Tuesday night. By the way, winds expected to pick up as well. Head out to the beach today, though, even though we still have the chance for coastal showers this morning. I think the earlier the better to head out to the beach. No advisories for boaters. The bays at a moderate chop seas at two feet for the Atlantic waters. Highs today getting into those upper 80s and low 90s across South Florida. Miami's high 90 degrees today. Rain chances, of course, going up as we continue to track that area of 
disturbance in the tropics. Todd. All right, Jen, thank you. The Hurricanes baseball team begin their march to Omaha. Coming up, how some amazing glove work is helping him get there. Good morning, everybody. I'm Clay Ferrero with your local 10 at Morning Sports Wrap. Hurricanes baseball coach Jim Morris told us before last night's NCAA opener that every team that is in this tournament is here for a reason, implying that nothing's going to be easy. And his Canes got a first-hand look at that last night. The Canes taking on the fourth-seeded Stetson Hatters, and Canes brought their gloves to work. How about this play out in left field? What a play. Taking away a hit. Miami up 2-1 to one in the eighth, but here come the Hatters. Austin Hale lining a base hit to left center, ties it at two. But the Canes answer bases loaded and we got a wild pitch. Walker Scheller uncorking that one. The go ahead run comes in to score. Canes escape with a 4 to 2 win. To the big leagues, Marlins and Mets. Marcelo Zuna still on fire for the fish. Goodbye. Crushes a 99 mile an hour heater from Syndergaard, giving the Marlins a 1 to nothing lead. But it doesn't last. We're tied at 2 when James Loney does that. A two-run home run giving the Mets a 4-2 lead. They go on to win it by a final score of 6-2. To the NBA, where the Warriors are one step closer to repeating as champs. Most valuable player Stephen Curry struggled a bit in Game 1 of the NBA Finals, but the Warriors' supporting cast was outstanding in leading Golden State to a 104-89 win over LeBron James and the Cavaliers. The talent that we have on the bench, um, when they're out there playing like they did last night, I mean, yeah. Why get in the? Why stop the, the momentum? Why get in the way of that? It's fun to, to kind of see them bring the energy and do what they do. More than half a million people watch Game One of the Finals right here on Local 10. South Florida was actually fifth in the country in overnight ratings, according to reports yesterday. You can only see Game Two in the same place right here on Local 10 on Sunday night at 8 o'clock. Soccer Team USA against Colombia in Copa America action. No score until Christian Zapata changes that. Colombia getting on the board, and they would win it by a final score of 2 to nothing. I'm Clay Ferrero, and that is your Local 10 Morning Sports Wrap. Well, a TV news crew running to the rescue after spotting a deer in trouble. Coming up, how the adorable animal is doing this morning after being saved. Welcome back. Baby Deer is safe this morning after, believe it or not, a television crew with a heart helped save it from floodwaters in Pennsylvania. That's right. This heroic news crew was covering the flooding when they spotted the deer, realizing it probably wouldn't make it out of the water alone. One of them jumped in to save it. At least 11 people have had to be rescued from recent flooding there. More rain is expected to hit the area later today. Looks like it was the photog that jumped in. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Reporters would do it too. We are just getting started here on the Local 10 Weekend Morning News. We are. So here's a look at what we're working on for our next hour of news. Still ahead at 6, the world mourning the death of boxing legend Muhammad Ali after a long battle with Parkinson's disease. We're looking back at his historic and legendary career. And the desperate search for a mother and her young daughter continues. Coming up, how the girl's estranged father ended up hospitalized yesterday. And a trooper using deadly force when a traffic stop turns violent. But the victim's family now says the officer went too far. We're hearing from their attorney this morning. Local 10 News at 6 o'clock, just about ready to get fired up. But first, we take a peek outside the window. It's dark, but guess what? It's 80 degrees already. It's warm and muggy. Jennifer's going to have your forecast when we come back. Right now on Local 10 News, the world mourning the death of the greatest legendary boxer, Muhammad Ali. He's being remembered after passing away in Phoenix last night. Plus, the search continues for a missing mother and daughter. The case growing more complicated after the girl's father is hospitalized. A traffic stop turning violent. Cameras rolling as a trooper uses deadly force. The victim's family now demanding some answers saying that trooper went too far. And believe it or not, we are tracking a disturbance in the tropics, expected to dump a lot of rainfall here in South Florida. Weather Authority meteorologist Jennifer Cray has your forecast. Live, the one and only Local 10 News starts right now.
Good morning, South Florida. I'm Eric Rako, and I'm in for Nikki Mohan this entire weekend. Yeah, good to have you here. And I'm Todd Tongan. It is Saturday, June 4th. Thank you for waking up with us. Of course, everybody wants to know what the weather's going to be like. Boy, has it been hot. Yesterday afternoon, I was melting, and it's already, what, 80 degrees out there and muggy, right? And the sun's not up yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, Eric and Todd, you know what? Temperature's just not dropping. We've been at 80 degrees uh, throughout the evening hours. Temperatures do not want to drop. Of course, uh, if we don't drop any further, well, uh, temperatures are just going to warm up once that sun is up. And uh, on the radar, tracking a few showers that are offshore near Broward County, but those are moving towards the north northwest, so it should stay away from the coastline for Broward in the next hour. However, later on this morning, we still could have a few coastal showers right along the east coast. And then, of course, with those afternoon thunderstorms pushing inland. Anyways, temperatures right now starting off at 81 degrees in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, Miami managed to drop one degree, 79 at the top of this hour, 82 in Key West. So that is a warm start. All right, we got to get to the tropics. Of course, this is the first 10 minutes of the newscast and always giving you that tropical update. But this one is something we definitely have to talk about in the upcoming days. Why? Because this area of disturbed weather is going to be heading towards the southern Gulf of Mexico by tomorrow. And once it does that, it makes that turn towards Florida and that's where it has that 70% chance for formation GFS model doing that turn uh, as we head into Sunday and then the center of the storm should arrive by overnight Monday into Tuesday into Northwest Florida. We could be dealing with some heavy rain though here in South Florida. More on that coming up. Todd. Hi Jen, thank you. Breaking overnight, legendary boxer Muhammad Ali dead at the age of 74. The former heavyweight champion of the world had been hospitalized for a respiratory illness. Ali, shown here receiving the Congressional Medal of Honor, uh, Congressional Medal of Freedom from President George W. Bush, is known, of course, as the greatest, and he proved deserving of the title throughout his career. Ali was arguably one of the most recognized and respected sports figures the world has ever seen, and he had a special connection to South Florida. He did. He was a Louisville native, but he still found a place to call home right here in sunny Miami Beach, and Local 10 Sports Director Will Manso explains how so. I shook up the world! I shook up the world! I want the world to know I'm so great! He was simply the greatest. Born in Louisville, Kentucky, Muhammad Ali burst onto the national scene in 1960, winning an Olympic gold medal. A short time later, he came to Miami to train at the famed Fifth Street Gym with Angelo Dundee, who spent long hours molding the young fighter's talent. Uh, the way I see work in the gym, I knew this was special. First guy in the gym, last guy to leave, uh, and then he would run from Overtown to the beach. From 2nd Avenue and 10th Street, he'd run to the 5th Street Gym, work and run back. I mean, the guy was determined to become the heavyweight champion of the world. In 1964, Ali was set to challenge then unbeaten and seemingly invincible champion Sonny Liston in Miami Beach. In the days leading up to the fight, Ali tried to shake up Liston. The fight will not go be This will be the biggest contest in the and if you like to lose your money, be a fool in that old time. I thought it was sensational. I thought it was great. You know, and uh, after all, he changed the whole era of boxing. It was the silent era. Uh, Marciano, Joe Lewis, all those guys before, they never emoted. Ali beat Liston in that historic fight at the Miami Beach Convention Center, winning the heavyweight championship when Liston refused to come out from his corner to start the seventh round. After the fight, he revealed he was a member of the Nation of Islam and changed his name from Cassius Clay to Muhammad Ali. He defended his title nine times. Then, in 1967, citing his religious beliefs, Ali refused induction into the army. He was stripped of his title and boxing license and convicted of a felony. The United States Supreme Court overturned that ruling four years later and Ali returned to the ring. In one of the most anticipated fights of all time, Ali fought unbeaten heavyweight Joe Frazier at Madison Square Garden in March 1971, and Ali lost in a unanimous decision. The two would fight again two more times with Ali winning both of those battles. In between, Ali beat George Foreman and Zaire in one of the biggest upsets in boxing history, 
to become the first heavyweight to regain his title. Ali fought several more years after that, winning a third heavyweight title. Even in his late 30s, Ali kept putting in those long hours of training. Tell all my fans and friends and brothers and sisters and know that Ali is working. Out here in the morning, four o'clock, you see the sun just rising. Go do about 250 exercises and promise you this time, be light dancing and I will destroy him. As his boxing career came to a close, the champion fought a very public battle with Parkinson's syndrome and he faced it with dignity and grace. He had a peace of mind and serenity that he transmitted to others who were ailing. And just like the younger Ali, the older one never shied away from the public eye. He captivated millions as he lit the torch for the 1996 Summer Olympics in Atlanta. They love him. He's like an idol. Nobody influenced nations. Nobody influenced entire religions. But Ali had that power worldwide. After boxing, Ali toured the country and the world bringing joy to millions of fans. Among the many tributes, Ali was presented Miami Beach's highest honor, a gold medallion. Honored as the greatest sportsman of the 20th century, Ali's influence transcended sports. He changed the world of boxing and the world itself, and will be remembered as one of the most important and beloved figures of our time. I'm Will Manso for Local 10 News. Meanwhile, Ali's family announced his death by releasing a statement that read in part, after a 32-year battle with Parkinson's disease, Muhammad Ali has passed away at the age of 74. The Ali family would like to thank everyone for their thoughts, prayers, and support, and asks for privacy at this time. And former professional boxer Mike Tyson tweeted out, God came for his champion. So long, great one. Also, Oscar De La Hoya wrote on Twitter, Rest in peace, Muhammad Ali, a legend who transcended sport and was a true champion for all. A developing story this morning, the desperate search for a mother and her young daughter continues, but the case, it just keeps getting more complicated. Mm -hmm. This morning, the girl's estranged father was actually hospitalized after a standoff with police. Yeah, Local 10 News reporter Laren Livingston outside Kendall Regional Hospital where he's recovering this morning. Laren, just a bizarre twist in an already bizarre situation. Indeed, almost coming out of left field. He's listed in stable condition at last check, but police tell us he reportedly tried to take his own life as they're now still working to find his estranged daughter and her mother. Police tell Local 10 News they got word Thursday that Gustavo Castano may have been having suicidal thoughts. Officers would later find him outside a Hialeah Home Depot in a rented truck with a box cutter in his hand. To me, it seems like someone can live with their conscience. He threatened to harm himself to the officers as they were approaching by placing the box cutter uh, in the area of his neck. Castano was rushed to the hospital with self-inflicted wounds to his neck. Detectives searched the area where he was found, including a nearby lake, but nothing turned up. Police have not named Castano as a suspect or person of interest, but his home has been searched along with a warehouse he's connected to. My family is worried about this situation. This is really weird that something is missing. Family members still hopeful, prayerful, that they'll find Liliana Moreno and her eight-year-old daughter Daniela alive and well. It's heartbreaking knowing that Danielita is somewhere out there and we can't get to them along with her mom. I miss them. I mean, this is something that nobody wants to go through. And back live here, it's important to note that Castano has not been charged with anything. He has not been named a suspect. And right now this investigation is ongoing. And of course, if you have any information as to the whereabouts of this mother and her daughter, you're encouraged to contact Miami-Dade Police as soon as possible. Reporting live there in Livingston, Local 10 News. New overnight, an investigation is underway after a car ended up in a canal in Pembroke Pines. It happened near North Perry Airport at the intersection of North University Drive and Pines Boulevard. The car actually crashed through a chain link fence behind a strip mall before then going underwater. Crews were at the scene pulling the car out of the canal. It's still unclear if anyone was hurt. The wife of Hall of Fame linebacker Lawrence Taylor denying accusations against her after being arrested on domestic violence charges. She's accused of throwing an object at the football legend, hitting him in the back of the head. 
Police say the former football player was left with a three-inch gash. Lynette Taylor also facing charges of resisting arrest after officers say she was combative when they arrived. Lynette Taylor denied the charges in court yesterday. Yeah, I'm mean, not. That's a lie. My husband is 300-pound linebacker. I didn't hit him in the head. Yes, I'm Lawrence Taylor's wife. He lied. Lawrence Taylor spent his entire 13-year career with the New York Giants, winning two Super Bowl titles. Miramar police are looking for the driver of a white cargo van who they say hit and killed a person. Nearby surveillance video shows the person trying to cross the road as cars race by, and that's when a white cargo van slams into him on State Road 7 near Southwest 25th Street. Investigators say the victim landed nearly 100 feet from the point of impact. Police still don't know the victim's name because he didn't have any identification on him at the time. Police say, though, this photo, it's a still photo from video. It shows that white van, and it should have damage to the front left fender. Anyone with information is asked to call Broward County Crime Stoppers at 954-493-TIPS. A fiery train derailment leaving quite a mess and forcing people to evacuate. Coming up, the very latest on the damage and environmental impact left behind. And also next, a bear climbing up to a tree near a home and refusing to come down for hours. How this standoff came to an end. Good morning, South Florida. Temperatures struggling to drop into those upper 70s. Finally, Miami did. Right now, it's 79 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. We could see a few coastal showers through the rest of the morning hours. Also, it's going to be a hot one, guys. All those details on our weekend forecast when we come back. Welcome back. Cleanup underway after a train towing cars full of oil derailed in Oregon, sparking a large fire. This happened yesterday east of Portland. 11 cars derailed on a track parallel to the Columbia River, sending a plume of black smoke into the sky. The fire forced people in the area to evacuate. Steps have been taken to contain possible contamination and minimize damage to wildlands and water supplies. The area has been evacuated in a quarter mile radius and residents beyond that have been put on notice for possible evacuation if needed. And it's still unclear if oil seeped into the river or what caused this derailment to even happen. No injuries were reported. Fort Hood, Texas is now mourning the death of nine soldiers who were attempting to cross a flooded creek when the military vehicle they were riding in overturned. Other soldiers in a vehicle following behind them were able to rescue three of their comrades who were hospitalized and have since been released. The accident comes as parts of Texas are now completely underwater. With the continuing downpour of rain, we will face sustained challenges uh, for a few more days. Massive flooding from the record rainfall has led the Texas governor to declare a state of disaster in dozens of counties. As parts of the state remain under a flood warning, the relentless rain could finally break this weekend. New this morning, officials working to remove a bear that climbed up a tree in a Jacksonville neighborhood. Here's a look at that bear right here, hanging out on a tree just behind a house. Last night, wildlife officials shot the animal several times with tranquilizer darts. Officials say the bear eventually fell asleep. Now they're trying to still get it down. He's just taking a snooze, that's all. Hanging out. You know what that homeowner <laughs> says. Honey, we got a bear in the tree. <laughs> um, it's, it's 617 and it's a warm and muggy morning mm, and it is. Jennifer Correa, yeah. what's the matter with you? <laughs> We're, we, matter it's with too you? early to be this hot. <laughs> well, I, I know. I, I mean, I don't know. I think it, it's typical for this time of year, Todd, in South Florida. You know, you've been living here. Not a long ready time. for it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I know. I'm not ready for it either. But uh, yes, we're getting into summertime weather and we are feeling it, no doubt about it. Still beautiful live view out of Hollywood Beach Cam. Wind calm, uh, even at the water. Nice and calm there too. The surf almost smooth. A couple of showers over the Atlantic waters, but it is far away from the coast. Still could have one or two showers hitting the coastline though uh, through the rest of the morning. But uh, take a look how temperatures have been struggling to drop into those upper 70s. Pembroke Pines finally dropping into 78 degrees, 77 Hialeah, also 78 in Homestead. Fort Lauderdale still hanging on to 81 though, and a warm 82 degrees in Key West. Warm and muggy, that's for sure. 
So it's going to be a humid Saturday for us here in South Florida. Winds are calm from Fort Lauderdale to Miami and further down south. Winds are out of the southeast up to 10 miles per hour in the lower keys. Meanwhile, here's a look at the radar. So not much action going on on land, but definitely offshore. Some of these showers are starting to enter the coastline near Boca Raton and then northward of that. Otherwise, so far, mainly dry conditions right now. But again, through the morning hours could still have a coastal shower along that east breeze as that high stays over parts of the western Atlantic and pushes out into the central Atlantic. Now we do have a chance for storms this afternoon as well. Otherwise, just a mix of sun and clouds. And of course, very warm out there as temperatures heat up into the upper 80s, low 90s across South Florida. This is the area that we are tracking over the tropics. It's right now currently in the western Caribbean, but eventually by tomorrow we'll be getting into the Yucatan Peninsula and the southern Gulf of Mexico. And once it does that, the warm waters in the Gulf of Mexico are going to help to intensify the system. Could be talking about depression, uh, maybe sometime later Sunday into Monday, maybe even tropical storm Colin. So something we have to track because that is headed towards the Florida Peninsula. Meanwhile, today we got to enjoy it, head out to the beach out there. I recommend earlier the better, despite the risk of some coastal showers. Uh, no advisories for boaters. Seas two feet to bays at a moderate trough, including for the Keys. Seas are two to four feet beyond the reef. Highs today hitting 90 degrees in Miami, and it will be feeling like the mid to upper 90s out there by the middle of the afternoon. Monday, Tuesday is when we get uh, the worst of the weather due to the tropical, uh, the potential of that tropical system. Uh, right now, whether it's a tropical storm or not, or just stays as a depression, we are going to get some rain. That's for sure. Erica. All right, Jennifer, an exciting time of year for a lot of people. Graduations going on and this great grandmother we want to tell you about. She attended her granddaughter's graduation, except she was not watching from the audience. Coming up more on this grandma in her cap and her gown. But first, here's a look at your winning lottery numbers. Good luck. Well, if you're looking for something to do today with the family, we have a few events to tell you about. The Summer Games Exhibit is opening at the Miami Children's Museum. Kids can enjoy obstacle courses, dance parties, and a whole lot more. The museum's open from 10 in the morning until 6 o'clock this evening. Admission is $20. If you're in Lauder Hill, take the whole family to a safety day at John E. Mullen Aquatic Center. There's going to be water safety lessons, CPR and scuba demonstrations, free swimming, games, raffles, a whole lot more. The event starts at noon and goes until 5 and it's free for the whole family. And train days happening at the Gold Coast Railroad Museum in Miami. All aboard! <laughs> There's going to be trains on display, bounce houses, and several other activities for both kids and adults. The event is from 11 until 4 and it's free. Well, she's waited 70 years to graduate from high school and now a great grandmother in Utah finally getting her turn. It was a moment that the 87 year old once thought would never happen. Of course not. And Raleen Taysom, she dropped out of high school. That was back in 1944 when her father died and leaving her to care for her and seven of her siblings. She says she had to work hard to help support the family, so she never got the chance to go back to school. But this year, Raleen's family spoke to the school district superintendent and they arranged for her to graduate with her great granddaughter. I thought we were just kidding. They kept looking at me when they passed, like, what are you doing here? <laughs> it made me feel good. I was doing something special and honorable. I feel like I really did what I wanted. Now that she graduated, Raleen says she's not ruling out any future education or career options, but for now, she's sticking with her day job as a great grandma. Well, we're following the death of a boxing legend. Muhammad Ali passed away in Arizona last night. Coming up, we have a live report from the historic Fifth Street Gym, where Ali trained right here in South Florida. Also next, a trooper saying he was forced to fire after a traffic stop turned violent. The encounter caught on camera. Take Local 10 online with you wherever you're headed. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for the latest social media news and interaction. Local 10 News starts right now.
Welcome back to South Florida. The sun is up. This is a live look at Hollywood Beach, and it is time to get out there and enjoy it this weekend, Jennifer, because it is hurricane season. <laughs> yes, that's right, Erica, and a good morning to you and good morning, South Florida. Plus, uh, we're also seeing a few showers mainly offshore, though, but some of these could definitely uh, make it on the coast, and that's what's expected throughout the morning hours. So zooming in on these uh, coastal showers, you can see some are heavy heavier than others and they're also small but uh looks like so far the direction is headed towards the north northwest uh just something to watch this morning otherwise later on this afternoon is when we can expect those afternoon thunderstorms to pop up which could still impact the east coast but most most uh, likely will be a uh, bigger impact for the western areas of Broward and Miami-Dade County. Right now, temperatures are in the low 80s for some of us. If not the upper 70s, it is warm and muggy, and it'll be like this for the rest of today. Temperatures getting into the mid and upper 80s by as early as 10 a.m. Let's give you that tropical update, and we are tracking that area of disturbed weather near Honduras in the western Caribbean right there. It is very disorganized. It will be headed towards, uh, it will be heading towards uh, the Yucatan Tam Peninsula and then into the southern Gulf of Mexico by sometime uh, later tomorrow. Once it does that, that formation potential goes up to 70% and then it will track out towards the state of Florida. And that's why we're expecting to possibly see some heavy downpours starting early next week. I'll have more details coming up. Erica. Breaking overnight, legendary boxer Muhammad Ali has died at the age of 74. The former heavyweight champion of the world had been hospitalized for a respiratory illness. The civil rights activist received the Presidential Medal of Freedom from President George W. Bush back in 2005, and he was known for his tireless efforts to promote Islam and help anyone in need, as well as participating in some of boxing's most legendary fights. Ali was arguably one of the most recognized and respected sports figures our world had ever seen. That is true. And mm -hmm. his death, announced late last night by his family, comes after a very long battle with Parkinson's disease. He called himself the greatest and told us how pretty he was. And for more than 20 years, he backed up his words with his fists. Beginning with a gold medal at the 1960 Summer Olympics, Cassius Clay took the boxing world by storm. In one of his first big pro fights, he brashly predicted an upset over heavyweight champion Sonny Liston. And if you like to lose your money, be a fool and bet on Sonny. Ali won that fight and the title in February of 1964. Then he announced his conversion to Islam and his new name, Muhammad Ali. A storm of criticism did not sway him. Whatever the punishment, whatever the persecution is for standing up for my religious beliefs, even if it means facing machine gun fire that day, I will face it before denouncing Elijah Muhammad and the religion of Islam. The flamboyant Ali found a straight man worthy of his persona, sportscaster Howard Cosell. We're just trying to make it look like something new for I'm always confident I'm with all of them. You're being extremely truculent. Whatever succulent mean, if that's good, I'm there. But the relationship was more than just an act. When Ali was stripped of his boxing title after refusing induction in the armed forces, citing religious reasons, Cosell spoke out in his defense. Finally, a court restored his boxing license, allowing Ali to return to the ring after a three-year absence. It was wrong what they did. You know, and they later admitted they did it, but then all the harm was done. We didn't see the best of this kid. Because this kid was so good at that time electrifying. Ali's comeback included some of his best remembered bouts. In 1974, he defeated George Foreman in Zaire, regaining the heavyweight title. Three times in four years, he fought Joe Frazier, culminating in 1975's Thrilla in Manila. In 1978, he won a rematch against Leon Spinks, becoming the first boxer ever to earn the heavyweight championship three times. His retirement was marked by the advance of Parkinson's disease. America's most beloved athlete became a champion for victims of the disease and an advocate for Parkinson's research. His devoted wife, Lonnie, became his voice when he could no longer speak for himself. But no matter how disabling the disease became, Muhammad Ali never lost his quick mind or the twinkle in his eyes. To many, he remains in his own words. Still the greatest of all time.
And continuing our coverage of the death of Muhammad Ali, Local 10 News reporter Ben Kennedy is live outside of the historic gym in Miami Beach where Ali actually trained. Good morning, Ben. Good morning, Todd. As you were talking about, Muhammad Ali had such a big impact right here on South Florida. He fought and trained at the Fifth Street Gym. In fact, if you take a look right here behind me, you can see a picture of him outside the gym. It is here that boxers mourn the loss of a legend. Known around the world as the greatest, Muhammad Ali, a legendary boxer, passed away overnight after being hospitalized with serious respiratory problems. And it's tragic. I mean, he's a legend. He is boxing. Muhammad Ali is the one that really brought the good persona of boxing and as a representative of the game. Two-time heavyweight champion of the world. Let's we caught up with heavyweight champ Shannon Briggs hours before the news broke of Ali's death. I was 20 years old when I met Muhammad Ali at Madison Square Garden and he mumbled in my ear. He said, if I fought you, I'd call you pretty lady. At the time, I had blonde dreadlocks. So um, now I'm a bald old man. Ali has ties to South Florida fighting and training at the Fifth Street Gym on Miami Beach. Here he is a few years back before the opening game at Marlins Park. It seems everyone he met has a story like this man who was his driver in New York City. We were going through the Bronx and he rolled down the window and said, I beat Joe Frazier right there at Yankee Stadium. He stood for something. He had a strong, you know, backbone of cause, and I think everyone will remember him. In 2013, the Fifth Street Gym moved from Fifth and Washington to right here off of Alton Road, and we have actually learned this morning there is a new boxing class named after Muhammad Ali that just began, so his legacy does live on right here in South Florida. Reporting live on Miami Beach, Ben Kennedy, Local 10 News. Caught on camera, a dramatic confrontation between an FHP trooper and a driver in Miami Gardens. Watch as the trooper jumps on the hood of a car before then opening fire and killing the driver as he speeds away. 24-year-old Dal Pierre Louis was be the man behind that wheel, and officials say he was driving without a license. A small group of family and friends gathered to pay their respects to Louis. Screams from his mother could be heard throughout the funeral home. The family's attorney is now speaking out. You know, this was a simple traffic stop. You know, he didn't, you know, come from robbing a bank or, uh, or fleeing from a murder scene. The charge is fleeing and eluding an officer. It's not a death sentence. Sky 10 was over that scene. It happened along Northwest 37th Avenue near the Palmetto Expressway. Officials say the trooper officials say the trooper had no choice but to fire at Louis. If he felt that his life was threatened and the vehicle is going to run you over, you know, that's a, a assault with a deadly weapon. The family attorney says he plans to go over FHP's policies to see if there's grounds for a lawsuit. Police are trying to identify the body of a man found floating near several alligators earlier this week. His body was found in a Southwest Ranches Canal on Monday. Police believe the man is in his 50s or 60s and had no teeth other than two rear molars. So they had some trouble identifying him. The body was found surrounded by gators in that canal, but police are treating the death as a homicide and they don't believe he was killed by those alligators. President Obama is now in Palm City after making a short stop here in Miami. The president arrived in South Florida to attend a couple of fundraisers for Democratic candidates, including Representative Patrick Murphy, who's running for Marco Rubio's soon-to-be vacant Senate seat. Here's video of the president leaving one of those fundraisers in Miami Beach. Air Force One and the president took off from MIA last night and headed to Palm City without any events on his public schedule. Word is he's set to enjoy a weekend of golf. Uh, look at my African-American over here. Look at him. Now to vote 2016, Donald Trump holding a rally in California, and he spoke about his support among African-Americans by pointing out a black man in the crowd and calling him my African-American. The presumptive Republican nominee made that comment while speaking about a previous rally in Arizona where a black supporter was arrested after punching a protester. The man Trump pointed out is Gregory Cheadle, a Republican running for a congressional seat in that area. Cheadle says he did not take offense and was happy to have been noticed. Serendipity. I mean, well, I think I was the only black guy in the audience anyway. So. <laughs> 
Uh, I think that had a lot to do with it. Had he said, my African-American friend or my African-American supporter or something like that, it would have been different. At that rally, Trump spoke about the tremendous support he says he has among black voters. But in an ABC News poll conducted in April, Trump had an 84 percent disapproval rating among African Americans. Hurricane season is upon us and we're already tracking a disturbance in the tropics. I don't know if we're in trouble or not. Coming up, Chief Meteorologist Betty Davis is telling us about new tools and technology that they'll be using this season. And we'll have more on the passing of the greatest of all time, Muhammad Ali, as the world remembers the three-time heavyweight champion. The 2016 hurricane season just started and we're already seeing some activity in the Gulf. Four days in and we want to make sure you are ready. So Weather Authority Chief Certified Meteorologist Betty Davis, she went to the National Hurricane Center to learn more about this new storm surge maps that forecasters will be using. Forecasters and federal officials unite at the National Hurricane Center to send a clear message about the 2016 Atlantic Basin hurricane season. Get ready now. Plan for hurricane season. South Florida has not had a major strike since Wilma in 2005. National Hurricane Center Director Dr. Rick Knapp recognizes that many people have become complacent. I asked folks to think about what would it be like if that hurricane you didn't think was going to come this year is later this year on your doorstep. You're going to all of a sudden desperately wish you had done some things in advance because getting ready for the next hurricane is really difficult to do at the very last minute. There are many things to consider, including whether you live in an evacuation zone. As Hurricane Andrew showed, the wind can be extremely damaging and deadly, but nine out of 10 fatalities in U.S. landfalling tropical cyclones have been due to water, whether it's storm surge in the coastal areas, inland flooding, people being lost at the beach and on boats, so let's respect the water. New this season, a storm surge potential flooding map. It's meant to give you an idea of how far inland storm surge could push and how high above ground the water could get. That water that comes up faster than any high tide you ever saw with wave action that is a battering ram that is not just merely getting wet but becomes life threatening. The only response is to evacuate. The message is clear. Having a plan is key. Betty Davis, Local 10 News. And you can get prepared for a hurricane season online just by going over to local10.com. There you can watch our hurricane house call special and find out exactly what you need to do to get your home and family ready for a storm. Well, it's 645 right now, and it is a warm, muggy morning. And Jennifer is telling us uh, on the sly, she said, get out early. Get out and enjoy it because the rest of the week is going to be a oh, wet one. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. It, you can it, share it with our viewers. It's okay. It's it not is. a secret. No, I'm going to be honest with you. We are expecting to see rounds of heavy rainfall Monday, Tuesday, and then uh, later on uh, towards the end of the week. It's going to still continue to be cloudy and wet, so kind of soggy week we're heading into. Of course, it has to do with the tropics, so we'll get into all of that, but still beautiful start for our Saturday. Yes, it's quite uncomfortable because of all the stickiness and humidity out there, but you know what? So far, we're starting off nice and quiet out there. Now, temperatures struggling to drop this morning. Right now, 79 degrees in Miami, 81 in Fort Lauderdale, so it is definitely a warm start, no doubt about it, with a calm wind in Fort Lauderdale and Miami. Here's a look at the radar zooming into south southern Miami-Dade County. There are just some light small showers moving through Palmetto Bay and Cutler Bay and these are tracking towards the northwest. Not a huge impact with these. Again, these are small and they're light as well. But we do expect a few more showers along the coast through the rest of this morning as high pressure remains over the western Atlantic, providing for that east and southeast wind today. We're talking about wind speeds anywhere between 5 to up to 15 miles per hour. Here's a look at that uh, disturbance that we're tracking that's in the western Caribbean. Very disorganized still, uh, but it will continue to track towards the Yucatan 
Cheyenne Peninsula and by tomorrow models are showing a closed and broad low pressure. So um, all the models actually agreeing on this that there will be a low that we'll be talking about. Now, will it become tropical storm Colin? Yes, there's a chance that it could, but whether or not it it does or does not, there is rain headed our way and it will be picked up. The low is expected to be picked up by the cold front that will be pushing into North Florida by Monday and Tuesday and that cold front expected to actually stall, but we'll be dealing still with lots of moisture being dragged in out of the southwest all across the peninsula. The heaviest amounts of rainfall associated with this uh, disturbance is expected for central and the west coast of Florida. This is the GFS model now updating and showing over five inches of rainfall in Tampa. So that's where we're expected to see the most amount of rainfall. Now locally back here in South Florida can't rule out uh, rainfall be amounts between two to up to four inches of rain locally. Uh, but of course it all depends on how much moisture we actually get over us and we'll be talking about it through the rest of the weekend and into the new work week. We're definitely going to have a soggy week. As you can see, rain chances going up to 70% by Monday, excuse. Todd. All right, thank you, Jen. The Hurricanes baseball team, they begin their march to Omaha. And coming up, we're going to show you how some amazing glove work helped them get there. Good morning, everybody. I'm Clay Ferrero with your local 10 at Morning Sports Wrap. Hurricanes baseball coach Jim Morris told us before last night's NCAA opener that every team that is in this tournament is here for a reason, implying that nothing's going to be easy. And his Canes got a first-hand look at that last night. The Canes taking on the fourth-seeded Stetson Hatters, and Canes brought their gloves to work. How about this play out in left field? What a play, taking away a hit. Miami up 2-1 to one in the eighth, but here come the Hatters. Austin Hale lining a base hit to left center, ties it at two but the Canes answer bases loaded and we got a wild pitch Walker Scheller uncorking that one. the go ahead run comes in to score Canes escape with a four to two win to the big leagues Marlins and Mets Marcelo Zuna still on fire for the fish goodbye crushes a 99 mile an hour heater from Syndergaard giving the Marlins a one to nothing lead but it doesn't last we're tied at two when James Loney does that a two run home run giving the Mets a 4 2 lead. They go on to win it by a final score of 6 to 2. To the NBA, where the Warriors are one step closer to repeating as champs. Most valuable player Stephen Curry struggled a bit in game one of the NBA Finals, but the Warriors supporting cast was outstanding in leading Golden State to a 104 to 89 win over LeBron James and the Cavaliers. The talent that we have on the bench, um, when they're out there playing like they did last night, I mean, yeah. Why get in the? Why stop the, the momentum? Why get in the way of that? It's fun to, to kind of see them bring the energy and do what they do. More than half a million people watched Game One of the Finals right here on Local 10. South Florida was actually fifth in the country in overnight ratings, according to reports yesterday. You can only see Game Two in the same place right here on Local 10 on Sunday night at 8 o'clock. Soccer Team USA against Colombia in Copa America action. No score until Christian Zapata changes that. Colombia getting on the board, and they would win it by a final score of two to nothing. I'm Clay Ferrero, and that is your Local 10 Morning Sports Wrap. Still more to come this morning. Got a couple more hours to hang, Todd. <laughs> Here's a do. look at what we're working on for our next hour for you. Still ahead at 7, the world mourning the death of boxing legend Muhammad Ali after a long battle with Parkinson's disease. We're looking back at his historic career. And the desperate search for a mother and her young daughter continues. Coming up, how the girl's estranged father ended up hospitalized yesterday. And a trooper using deadly force when a traffic stop turns violent, but the victim's family says that officer went too far. We're hearing from their attorney this morning. She catches on fast. Local 10 News at 7 is coming up next. Right now on the Local 10 News at 7, breaking news overnight. The entire world united in mourning after boxing legend Muhammad Ali dies at the age of 74. Plus, police continue their desperate search for a missing mother and her daughter. This morning, a new twist to this case. And the wife of uh, former NFL superstar behind bars this morning, what she is accused of doing that has her locked up. And Local 10 Weather Authority Jennifer Correa tracking the tropics. 
what you can expect from Mother Nature this weekend. Live, the one and only Local 10 News starts right now. Good morning to you, South Florida. I'm Eric Rico, and I'm in for Nikki all weekend long. Yes, uh, for some well-deserved time off for Nikki. Absolutely. I'm Todd Tong, and thank you for waking up with us this Saturday, June 4th. And, of course, our top story this morning, the death of boxing legend Muhammad Ali, stunning the world. But first, we want to get a check of the forecast with Jennifer Correa because a lot of activity there on the radar screens. Good oh, morning. Yeah. Hey, good morning, guys, and good morning, South Florida. So we're waking up to uh, partly to mostly cloudy skies all across South Florida. Here's a live view out of Fort Lauderdale. Good morning to you, Fort Lauderdale and you can see a few showers in the distance, but they're over the Atlantic waters. Right now it is 80 degrees in Fort Lauderdale. Let me tell you, it is warm. It is humid temperatures struggling to drop this morning. And by the way, it feels like 85 degrees. That humidity will only get worse as we head into this afternoon. So be ready with the water bottle and uh, also maybe a portable fan. You're going to need it. It's going to be so hot out there. Also on the radar, there are those showers I mentioned offshore, still a few miles to the east. A few light drizzles in southern Miami-Dade County. That's about it for now. One or two uh, coastal showers will sneak in along this east breeze as high pressure remains over the Atlantic Ocean. All right, let's talk about the tropics because it is the first 10 minutes of the newscast and we got to give you that tropical update. Plus, we are tracking this area over the Western Caribbean that has a 70% chance for formation. Once it moves towards the Yucatan Peninsula, that's when the formation potential goes up. So far, the models like the Canadian and the GFS are actually agreeing on the track by Monday morning should be heading closer to the northwest coast of Florida. Erica. Ali's got a left. Ali's got a right. If he hits you once, you'll sleep for the night. And as you lie on the floor while the valve counts 10, hope and pray that you never meet me again. Breaking news overnight, legendary boxer and international icon Muhammad Ali has died at the age of 74. The famous fighter will go down as one of the most influential and recognizable sports figures ever. No doubt about that. Local 10 sports director Will Manso helped show us how the man simply known as the greatest left such an impact around the world and also right here in South Florida. I shook up the world! I shook up the world! I want the world to know! I'm so great. He was simply the greatest. Born in Louisville, Kentucky, Muhammad Ali burst onto the national scene in 1960, winning an Olympic gold medal. A short time later, he came to Miami to train at the famed Fifth Street Gym with Angelo Dundee, who spent long hours molding the young fighter's talent. Uh, the way I see work in the gym, I knew this was special. First guy in the gym, last guy to leave, uh, and then he would run from Overtown to the beach. From 2nd Avenue and 10th Street, he'd run to the 5th Street Gym work and run back. I mean, the guy was determined to become the heavyweight champion of the world. In 1964, Ali was set to challenge then unbeaten and seemingly invincible champion Sonny Liston in Miami Beach. In the days leading up to the fight, Ali tried to shake up Liston. The fight will not go be This will be the biggest contest in the country. And if you like to lose your money, be a fool in that whole country. I thought it was sensational. I thought it was great. You know, and uh, after all, he changed the whole era of boxing. It was the silent era. Uh, Marciano, Joe Lewis, all those guys before, they never emoted. Ali beat Liston in that historic fight at the Miami Beach Convention Center, winning the heavyweight championship when Liston refused to come out from his corner to start the seventh round. After the fight, he revealed he was a member of the Nation of Islam and changed his name from Cassius Clay to Muhammad Ali. He defended his title nine times. Then, in 1967, citing his religious beliefs, Ali refused induction into the army. He was stripped of his title and boxing license and convicted of a felony. The United States Supreme Court overturned that ruling four years later, and Ali returned to the ring. In one of the most anticipated fights of all time, Ali fought unbeaten heavyweight Joe Frazier at Madison Square Garden. March 1971, and Ali lost in a unanimous decision. The two would fight again two more times with Ali winning both of those battles. 
In between, Ali beat George Foreman and Zaire in one of the biggest upsets in boxing history to become the first heavyweight to regain his title. Ali fought several more years after that, winning a third heavyweight title. Even in his late 30s, Ali kept putting in those long hours of training. Tell all my fans and friends and brothers and sisters and know that Ali is working. Out here in the morning, four o'clock, you see the sun just rising. Go do about 250 exercises and promise you this time, be light dancing and I will destroy him. As his boxing career came to a close, the champion fought a very public battle with Parkinson's syndrome, and he faced it with dignity and grace. He had a peace of mind and serenity that he transmitted to others who were ailing. And just like the younger Ali, the older one never shied away from the public eye. He captivated millions as he lit the torch for the 1996 Summer Olympics in Atlanta. They love him, he's like an idol. Nobody influenced nations. Nobody influenced entire religions. But well, Ali had that power worldwide. After boxing, Ali toured the country and the world, bringing joy to millions of fans. Among the many tributes, Ali was presented Miami Beach's highest honor, a gold medallion. Honored as the greatest sportsman of the 20th century, Ali's influence transcended sports. He changed the world of boxing and the world itself, and will be remembered as one of the most important and beloved figures of our time. I'm Will Manso for Local 10 News. Ali's family released a statement saying in part, quote, after a 32 year battle with Parkinson's disease, Muhammad Ali has passed away at the age of 74. The Ali family would like to thank everyone for their thoughts, prayers and support and ask for privacy at this time. Ali's daughter Layla posted this picture right here on her Facebook page just hours before his death with the caption, I love this photo of my father and my daughter Sydney when she was a baby. Thanks for all the love and well wishes. I Feel your love and appreciate it. And boxer Floyd Mayweather weighed in on Ali's death late last night saying words can't explain what Muhammad Ali has done for the sport of boxing. He's one of the guys that paved the way for me to be where I am today. We lost a legend, a hero, and a great man. Police continue their desperate search for a missing mother and daughter, but this morning a twist in this case. That young girl's estranged father hospitalized after a tense standoff with police. Local 10 News reporter Laren Livingston is live outside of Kendall Regional Hospital where that man is recovering this morning. And Laren, what's the latest? We're hearing that this gentleman is in stable condition. And as you said, he was reportedly rushed here after apparently trying to take his own life while this ongoing search for his estranged daughter and her mother continues here across Miami-Dade County. Police tell Local 10 News they got word Thursday that Gustavo Castano may have been having suicidal thoughts. Officers would later find him outside a Hialeah Home Depot in a rented truck with a box cutter in his hand. To me, it seems like someone can live with their conscience. He threatened to harm himself to the officers as they were approaching by placing the box cutter uh, in the area of his neck. Castano was rushed to the hospital with self-inflicted wounds to his neck. Detectives searched the area where he was found, including a nearby lake, but nothing turned up. Police have not named Castano as a suspect or person of interest, but his home has been searched along with a warehouse he's connected to. My family is worried about this situation. This is really weird that something is missing. Family members still hopeful, prayerful, that they'll find Liliana Moreno and her eight-year-old daughter Daniela alive and well. It's heartbreaking knowing that Danielita is somewhere out there and we can't get to them along with her mom. I miss them. This is something that nobody wants to go through. And again, at last check, Castano was listed in stable condition here at Kendall Regional. And it's important to note that he has not been charged with anything and has not again been named as a suspect and has not been arrested in connection to anything. But of course, you're encouraged to contact Miami-Dade Police if you know anything about where this woman and her daughter may be. Of course, this is something we'll continue to follow and update you as soon as that information comes into our newsroom here on Local 10 and at Local10.com. And I'm reporting live, Larry Livingston, Local 10 News. Miramar police are looking for the driver of a white cargo van that they say hit and killed a person. Nearby surveillance video shows the person trying to cross a road as cars race by. 
That's when a white cargo van then slams into him on State Road 7 near Southwest 25th Street. Investigators say the victim landed nearly 100 feet from the point of impact. Police still don't know the victim's name because he didn't have any identification on him at the time. Police say this still photo from the video shows that white van. It does have some damage to the left front fender. Anyone with information is asked to call Broward County Crime Stoppers at 954-493-TIPS. The wife of Hall of Fame linebacker mm -hmm. Lawrence Taylor, mm -hmm. who's accused of domestic violence, is now denying those allegations against her. She's accused of throwing an object at the football legend, hitting him in the back of his head. Police say he was left with a three-inch gash. Lynette Taylor also faces charges of resisting arrest after officers say she was combative when they got there. Lynette Taylor denied the charges in court yesterday. Yeah, I mean, that's a lie. My husband is 300-pound linebacker. I didn't hit him in the head. Yes, I'm Lawrence Taylor's wife. He lied. And her husband, Lawrence Taylor, he's a former linebacker for the New York Giants. He spent his entire 13-year career in New York winning two Super Bowls. An elementary school principal is in Orlando is now behind bars after investigators say they found hundreds of child porn pictures on his home computer. Ricky Shepard was an employee of Brevard Schools for 35 years and just served his first year as principal. In 1999, Shepard was reprimanded for inappropriate behavior involving gifts he gave to a first grader. The 59-year-old has been fired and is expected to soon be permanently removed from Brevard Schools. A new update to a story that went viral a few weeks ago. A father and son under fire for trying to rescue a baby bison. This morning we're hearing from that father and son who say they still think that they did the right thing. Plus a new team set to debut this summer at the Olympics and it's not from any country. Coming up we're going to tell you about the members of a brand new refugee Olympic team. Welcome back to you. So this morning we're hearing from the two men who took a baby bison from Yellowstone National Park. Shamash and Shaquille Kassam found this bison in distress and they decided to load the baby into their SUV and take it to the park ranger. But when the bison was returned to the herd, it was rejected and it had to be euthanized by rangers. Both men received harsh criticism about their decision. We picked up the bison because it was abandoned by the herd. When I saw the calf outside shaking, I felt that, uh, you know, this was the right thing to do. Well, the father and son, they now both agree that they should have left the animal and let nature take its course. 715, let's go to Jennifer and find out what on earth is going to happen this weekend with the weather. You know, a lot of people nature have Nature taking plans. its course, Todd. Yes, nature taking <laughs> its course, which I think, I'm scared to say, is uh, some rainfall. But hopefully mm -hmm. a little later in the weekend mm -hmm. or the start of the week, work week. Yeah, well, Todd and Erica, we I think today is the drier day, not necessarily dry, but uh, I think today's a better day. And then tomorrow we're going to have more showers and thunderstorms and uh, that rain chance going up tomorrow, but definitely going up for Monday, Tuesday because of the, the disturbance we're tracking right now in the tropics. Now, here's a live view out of Miami's tower cam. Looks a bit gray out there, right? So waking up to those mostly cloudy skies, the sun trying to peak through, uh, but some of these clouds are dark and does contain a little bit of moisture. It looks like there's some rain right there, and I know on the radar, uh, this is facing to the south, so on the radar, there have been a few light showers moving over Cutler Bay and uh, portions of southern southwest Miami-Dade. 80 degrees right now in Miami and Fort Lauderdale, 83 in Key West. It is a warm and humid start, no doubt about it. Here's a look at the radar, so we're going to zoom in to where I mentioned. Uh, these are small, though, but again, any showers can develop at any time, and then thunderstorms will most likely develop this afternoon with that daytime heating. So the crossings dealing with some light rainfall right now and out into P Pinecrest as well. Uh, looks like that's going to be headed into Dayland Mall, but those are very light. Not should not be a huge impact. Now, if you're going to spend the whole day outdoors, make sure to take the umbrellas with you. We do have that high pressure system over the Atlantic and that's providing for an east and southeast wind today, five to up to 15 miles per hour. Here's a look at the Western Caribbean and you can see where that cluster of showers and thunderstorms is and it looks like it's just towards uh, just 
off the coast of Honduras, I should say. Now, this is going to track out towards the Yucatan Peninsula by tomorrow. Once it makes its way into the southern Gulf of Mexico, that's when we're expecting the formation potential to go up to 70%. Of course, it not only is it a body of water, but it is very warm, especially this time of year. Now, if this low pressure will either intensify to depression, maybe a tropical storm and will be picked up by the cold front that's entering the southeast and into the panhandle by Monday into Tuesday. And that's why it's going to make that turn towards Florida and it will hit parts of north and central Florida, bringing in lots of moisture from the tropics. And we will see some rounds of heavy rain in South Florida, but no doubt about it. The heaviest of the rains will definitely be from Tampa up to Gainesville, maybe even Jacksonville as well and down into Fort Myers could see rain amounts up to three to four inches highs today getting to 90 degrees now